This week, the studio comes together just a little more as I install Ameridroid's Easy Portal to get cables from the bridge to Studio E. And while we're thinking about Ameridroid, we'll give away a $25 gift card to one lucky viewer. Becca's got your top news stories, including Toshiba exiting the computer manufacturing business, a possible flaw in the modern debit card that led to a teenager being able to spend $20,000 of his mom's savings, and we'll talk about a giant asteroid that apparently has an ocean at its core. Robert Koenig is here to help us make wise investment decisions in the cryptocurrency market. This is all coming up, so strap in. It's time for the tech. Our live recordings are trusted only to solid state drives by Kingston Technology. Revive your computer with improved performance and reliability over traditional hard drives with Kingston SSDs. Category 5 TV streams live with Telestream Wirecast and Nimble Streamer. Tune in every week on Roku, Kodi, and other HLS video players. For local showtimes, visit Category5.tv. Ah, welcome back. We are back. We're back. Category 5 Technology TV is on the air. I had a bit of downtime. Did you get any downtime? Uh, I'm always on downtime. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, hey, that was really, really nice. Thank you to our community for continuing to support us through that. Uh, just a little bit of a break. Yeah. Uh, we've been doing this show for 13 years, and that's the first time we've ever literally taken a break. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we've had some downtime because of moving, or do, but we're working, working, Power working, outages. right? <laughs> Yeah, power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's the first time I've actually just taken some time with my family, and it's, it was just very enjoyable. So thank you very much. Good. Um, speaking of the support of our viewers, the show would not be possible without your support. Mm -hmm. And I do want to give a, a real quick shout out. I've got a big long list here of some particular viewers who, um, who I want to make mention of. Um, so just to say a big thanks to BP9. Scott Barkley, Ron Morissette, Jerry Kowalski, Jonathan Garby, Jens Nissen, Ameridroid, Noman5, Bill Marshall, and NICAD. Um, now, you folks supported us through the Kickstarter campaign to get us into this space. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are a lot more of you as well who participate in the show and supporting the show through our Patreon at patreon.com slash Category 5. That's a cool way to support Category 5. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome TV. I mean, the Kickstarter was to get us safely into this space, get us out of the old studio and into this one during a pandemic. Yeah. Um, but the, the patronage is what keeps us going every single month. That's right. Yeah. I can't believe how quickly the first of the month comes up on us and, you know, I'm keeping on top of the bills, doing well that way. And it's largely thanks to your support, and I appreciate that very, very much. Mm -hmm. uh, that makes a world of difference for us here at Category 5 TV. And, and we're working on getting some things done, and, and part of that is, um, is going to be unveiled tonight with Ameridroid's Easy Portal. A really oh, cool, right. simple device. We've talked about it, yeah. and I don't want to get too much into it right now, but we've talked about how... Um, Owning a 3D printer may just be a way to save money by being able to create cool things that uh, do a, a good job. Yes. And Easy yeah. Portal is one of those products Bo at Ameridroid came up with that uh, it's just so practical. Mm -hmm. and, and so just so you know, it's basically an easy conduit through a wall, through a desk, through ceiling tiles, whatever you want to go through. And it's completely customizable, but Bo has designed it and made it so that he can 3D print it at Ameridroid. So... What we're seeing tonight is 3D printed. Yes. Yes. That's flipping cool. So you can order those. Uh, we actually have them through. You'll, you'll see the links below. But uh, also just go to Ameridroid.com. Uh, I'll mention the coupon code in just a couple of moments time. Um, but what I love about 3D printing and when Bo did this, created Easy Portal, specifically because I said, like, how am I going to, hey, Bo, how am I going to get through this wall? I got yeah. this stupid P, uh, uh, ABS pipe running all the cables into the studio. And, uh, and he came up with this solution to go through, you know, drywall and six inches of air. And, uh, and it just made me go, wow, Bo can, like, 
invent and create and then 3D print to bring his invention to reality. And it's like, that's what we live in. That's the world that we live in as far as how far technology has come. It's mind bending to me. It's true. It's not just a Mara droid. He's a Mara invent. Yeah, there you go. But it just makes me think that 3D printing is like, hey, that's the next big thing. I think it's around to stay. I think it has been for a while. <laughs> the next I'm big behind. Thing, but I know now it's the thing. But it, there's been such a such a slow adoption in the older community. And I'll say the older community, but the, like the, yeah. those of us who, you know, were working with computers in the 80s, 90s, it's, I think, may, maybe that's a generalization. Maybe that's us here in Canada. Maybe it's a little different down, down south. But um, I find that we're very slow to adopt these types of technologies because it seems like a fly-by-night. It could fail. It mm -hmm. could disappear. But now I'm seeing the reality of, hey, 3D printing, you can do some amazing things. I think also the, the big challenge with 3D print, printing at the onset was the cost. Like if yes. you wanted to get a oh, 3D yeah. printer. Do you remember when the Poyo 3D was on, was on our show? Oh, and it was like yeah. $2,000. And at the time, we thought that, wow, $2,000 for a consumer 3D printer, that's fantastic. Because right. at the time, they were $4,000. Yeah. Well, now you can actually go to our website, category5.tv, click on shop, and you'll see 3D printers there for 250 bucks. Which is amazing. What? I know. Well, and I love... they do a better job than those two $3,000 units? It's true. I love that we can go to our local library and... Well, we could. We could 3D print... It's like Sans pandemic. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we used but, to be able to. But you could... You could 3D print at the library. I'm like, this is how much 3D printing is, has become more readily accessible. Yeah, and it's schools, like, man, yeah. now I want to get a 3D printer at home just mm -hmm. to print some cool stuff with my kids. You, know, you have to if you want to do any 3D printing. Because uh, all the maker tech spaces and everything, at least here, are closed. Yes. Like we have, uh, we have um, tech spaces where you can, you know, you used, well, just before the pandemic, we were able to go and just pay a certain fee for an hour's, like, worth of 3d printing or yeah. whatever now yeah. you can't so uh, but you can get a 3d printer at home no yeah problem. or you could just know a meridroid yeah <laughs> uh, but a man, but this is my point Bo ha owns 3d printers yes and so when you say oh i wish i had something to do this he can go okay i'll invent it and then i'll print it and send it to you that's mind-blowing just totally cool that is so awesome and i'm thinking about okay so now we are in a situation at home. I mean, the kids are supposedly maybe going back to school. I don't know if that's a good idea, but if they do, they have to wear masks. It's yes. mandated. We have to wear masks anytime we're in a, in a public space. So even here at the studio, the only reason we're able to take our masks off right now is because we're distant from one another and I'm propelling my moist spittle this way. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little nod to our prime minister. That's right. Um, but um, it's like I'm thinking about having a 3D printer and being able to create hooks so that because you got to wash these things. We, I've been buying the uh, like the reusable. Mm. Right. So you can wash it and reuse it. Right. So you know that's that's pretty cool. But you got to wash it. So then I'm thinking, okay, a 3D printed hook system in the laundry room that just has a whole bunch of hooks and like whatever. It's just like I could just do that. Easy peasy if I had a 3D printer. So I got to work yeah. toward Got to work toward that. Yeah. Um, I want to remind you folks, um, another way you can support us and even just to know that we're producing videos is to go on to linuxtechshow.com, mm -hmm. click on that subscribe and the bell so that you receive the notifications anytime we post new videos. And we are going to be posting tons of videos. And in fact, Jeff, when we left Studio D, there were there was a bank of videos already pre-produced and ready to go online right. that never went up because oh, because of right, the transition. We're moving. Yeah, 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 yeah. So those videos are going to be going up. So it's going to be really, really wow. weird. Um, over the next little while, you're going to start seeing videos coming out that seem new that feature Jeff yeah. and Sasha. Yeah. So Sasha and me and Jeff standing at Studio D. Those are coming That's in the exciting. next coming weeks. Yeah. Oh, I miss Sasha. So. Hi, yeah. Sasha. I miss Hi, you. Sasha. Now, okay, speaking of um, YouTube and subscribing, yeah. how many subscribers are we at now? Oh, what were we? 
Put me on the spot, Jeff. I don't know. Do you want to bring up LinuxTechShow.com? Well, because well, I know well, at some point, was it, was it the last Was it the last show? At some point, I do remember something about you. Uh, if we hit a certain amount of sub- subscribers, mm-hmm. you were going to... I do have to do a dance, yes. I'm yeah. I'm bound now. So, that. so we meet, we met and exceeded 25,000 subscribers. So we did get there. Com. Yes. So, uh, so I've, I've been working with a uh, choreographer. I am very slow going on this because I'm terrible. I am not a dancer, folks. So, uh, but that's to come. What, that's what something kinda, you have to look forward to. What kind of dancing? Or, um, like she sal- has, salsa or? No, she's integrated. Um, she's got like um, a little bit of disco, picking the apples. Goodness. She's got a little bit of like. Head bobbing, a la the Orville and the Mocklin dance moves. <laughs> um, she's got she's got all kinds of crazy stuff. So uh, the Matrix, where I gotta I have to fly back like this, and so this is wow. all part. This is all like so I gotta just get the timing right, get the groove right, figure out what I'm gonna do with my feet and my hands. I can't and my face. <laughs> So that's, that's coming, coming in the future. It is coming in the future, yes. You know what <laughs> else is coming in the future? Mm-hmm. That's right. Jen and I were talking about this today. I'm Jen like, is his wife. That, yeah, it's my wife. We were talking about the, you know, the the Kickstarter that we had to get into the studio and and how there was this big Uber unobtainable, nobody's ever gonna do it. <laughs> What I thought was a joke. <laughs> oh, to, let's just throw something crazy on that. <laughs> To, to go through simulated labor, and we still have to schedule that because somebody was nuts enough to actually... <laughs> I love nuts people. And you know who I'm talking about. That's right. So we've got to schedule that. And yeah, we do. Like, we've got to get... It's st- been a weird time, and this is the yeah. weird thing. It's like, okay, well, when do we do that? I'm not allowed to physically be any closer than this to Jeff. I know. So maybe we'll talk to Jen and see if she can hook you up and... And do we, some of the work for me. The whole point of I'll the stand paintballs back. is that Sasha, five, Sasha was 500 full, yeah, 500 paintballs yes. that I pelted with. Sa- Sasha was going to shoot me. So we got to get her back here. Exactly. But see, our borders are closed at the province level, so she can't get yeah. out of her province into our province because she's had to move out east. So. It's too bad there wasn't a way to like simulate... Like uh, use a Raspberry Pi with <laughs> with a three D printer. I thought about this too. A three D printer to create a device that would allow remote shooting through yes. an app of a paintball gun, so that Sasha could do it remotely. But yes. then I thought, if ever I created such a thing, I am opening a Pandora's box because I don't want to be involved <laughs> in creating a remote targeting and shooting system so it's like there's, fair enough uh, I don't well really just don't put it on github <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it won't be on my thingiverse yeah <laughs> that's right oh that'd be that'd be fun so anyway that's coming but I was, I was saying to jen i'm like when it comes to that we should almost do like a a, a, a an extended broadcast mm. and for the simulated labor just be sitting here doing the thing and just like normal contractions, you don't know when they're coming on. Oh, you won't know. And, and have some interface where... Oh, that sounds good. Where the... Oh, the, where our contributor can... Hit the, the buttons button. and yeah. adjust the levels. Crank it up and, to 11. Yeah, and just... Mm. And How's that, that sound? Uh, it'd be neat if we could do that for a program. <laughs> so take five years to develop that. That one. I can do. It's not going to take five years. Four years. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I can already figure out how to do that. Yeah, so that would be All right, fun. folks. So if you want to help me turn a TENS machine into an app-driven cloud-based device and then be involved in controlling said device while connected to this guy's gut... Don't do it. ...while his wife is standing by laughing hysterically... <laughs> <laughs> the things we do for tech. Oh, yes. It's good yes. tech. All right. Well, I mentioned the uh, Easy Portal from Ameridroid. Yes. We have that to show you in just a couple of moments' time. Before we do that, though, Ameridroid, of course, as you know, is a company based out of California. We love them. And uh, Bo and his wife have been here, Rosemary, to visit. Well, not here uh, in Studio E, but Studio, um, D. Studio D to visit the show. So get onto our website, Category5.tv, do a quick search for uh, <laughs> do a search for Bo. Lichnowski. 
<laughs> Can you spell that? No, just just search for Ameridroid or something. But yeah, um, and and you'll get to see that video. And and it was really really neat to have them join us. But yeah. now we're you know we're finding neat ways to work together because I I just love this company. Oh yeah. And awesome. you know we talk about right now in this time shop local. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm up here in Canada. Ameridroid is down in California, but it still feels like I'm supporting local to shop through Ameridroid versus shopping through, say, Amazon or some of the bigger um, companies that that you can buy things from. And, and even buying, even so much as to say, rather than buying directly from a vendor like the manufacturer of SBCs, I'm rather I, I rather buy through Ameridroid so that I'm supporting them, yeah. and I'm also in turn supporting the SBC manufacturer because obviously Ameridroid gets them from them at a discount as well. So sure. so it's a cool way to to sort of let it trickle down through a really great company, Ameridroid.com, uh, and uh, I want to help you to be able to to shop there. So uh, um, back before my vacation time, I mentioned, hey, we're yes. going to be giving away a twenty-five dollar U.S. gift card for Ameridroid.com. And Jeff, twenty-five U.S. Twenty-five U.S. That's yeah, like a billion dollars Canadian. A billion dollars. <laughs> So Jeff has come up with a novel way to figure out who is going to win because we have not got everything set up. We can't do a proper draw here. So you've come up with an app. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so thank you for your ballots, by the way. We had some, I printed out some that, um, you know, the, that said some really nice things about Ameridroid. Maybe we can look at those as well. Absolutely. Um, and, and some of the ideas that they have. But do we just get right into it? So for a $25 gift card for Ameridroid. Yeah. Okay. So I've taken all the ballot entries. I've placed it into the app mm-hmm. and it's like a uh, prize wheel. Yes. It's a, it's a prize wheel. And so it is completely randomized. I will flip it right here. So you we can don't see. Even, we can't even bring it up on the screen. It's spinning. It's spinning. It's spinning. And... William Bauman. Nice. You are the big William. winner. What does William say? Did I, did I print Williams? Uh, you did. That's how I got his oh, name. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Well, I just let's couldn't see. tell you which one he is. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, William says, uh, doesn't tell us where he's uh, viewing from, but says that uh, he'd like to um, put this $25 gift card toward getting a night vision for his Raspberry Pi. Oh, very cool. How cool is that? Some of the things that you can do with a Raspberry Pi and a camera are awesome. Making, and Ameridroid is a great company to talk to about yeah. those kinds of things. So would that be more for so for like security and, camera at home kind of thing? You could or? use it for that. You could use it for, uh, yeah, I mean, for surveillance. It's great because it's an actual you know, camera attached to a single board computer. So you can do a lot more with it. Mm-hmm. Um, you'd be able to set it up for RTSP, be able to use it um, to automatically upload to FTP sites, whatever you want to do. Or uh, I like the RTSP uh, idea, uh, right. being able to stream it to like a DVR or something yes, like that as, awesome. a, as a network camera. Yeah, that's um, so much cheaper than buying like a full integrated camera kit. That's oh, great. yeah, yeah. That's so thank you everybody for your ballots um, and uh, we really, really um, love reading through your stories and the things that uh, that you hope to do with uh, with things that you purchase off of Ameridroid. Of course, check out Ameridroid.com and they have um, a, a plethora of uh, SPCs, single board computers. Um, so I get Raspberry Pis there, I get Odroids and Pine64 devices that you see on the show. Um, plus, um, I, I don't, I haven't seen Arduino boards however there are arduino pieces like uh like sensors yeah. and things like that and and uh that you can add to your raspberry pi uh right. arduino is neat because you can connect it to the gpio or the right. the sensors and things like that and be able to do some really cool things uh, we've done a couple of things like the thermal sensor yeah. that could see your hand That's and then i'm thinking we could hot. use that we could use that to <laughs> to check people's temperature by pointing at their forehead like they're oh, doing yeah, right now right totally we could use that same device so um, there's all kinds of stuff at Ameridroid.com, plus Easy Portal, which you're going to learn all about right after this quick break. Stick around. Remember, anytime you shop on Ameridroid.com, use the coupon code CAT5TVSUPPORTER at checkout. No matter what you're buying, you'll get a buck off your final total, and 10% of the sales profit will be donated back to Category 5 TV to help us produce videos like these. 
We moved into our new studio space in the height of the pandemic. Contractors weren't allowed to work at the time, and even hardware stores were closed, so I couldn't get a conduit installed to run cables into our studio space from the production room. Nor could I even buy a hacksaw to cut up the single piece of ABS pipe that I had on hand. So I simply made do by drilling a hole between the two rooms, and I laid the ABS into the hole, and uh, that was just there to protect the cables. And it's makeshift, and it's messy, but it got us through the past few months. But now I'm ready. I want to make find a basically a solution that is going to be more permanent, and it's going to look better. So I started looking into ready-made solutions out there, uh, and stuff that I could do myself without having to hire someone else with you know all the mad skills to do contractor work and everything. I wanted to be able to do it, save some money as well. So as it turns out, a Meridroid's Easy Portal product is exactly what I was looking for. It's designed for running cables between rooms, you know, for networking or things like that, but ideal for basically any type of cables. If you need to go through walls or through the floor, uh, through a desktop or ceiling tiles, um, it's really, really easy and it's much more tidy looking and it protects your cables as they're passing through as well. Easy Portal doesn't require any special tools or skills to install, which is perfect for me. No skills when it comes to carpentry and things like that. But as long as you've got a hole saw, which I do, uh, or some other kind of uh, tool that will be able to cut the hole uh, to the right uh, size for your Easy Portal, depending on which one you buy, um, Easy Portal provides a clean pass through for your cables. And it's complete with the finished flange, which I'm going to show you up close and personal here, on both sides of the hole. It's customizable to meet your needs uh, with port diameters all the way from itty bitty ones like this, half inch uh, to two inches. And this guy here is the two inch model or maybe a little bit bigger than that. Uh, this one is a custom one that we had built. Um, but I have a three inch hole saw in order to drill uh, the hole that I need for this particular easy portal. So keep in mind, of course, the diameter is the inner diameter, so when you're ordering it, that's the size of the hole, not the actual size that's going to be required for the hole through your wall. So just keep that in mind. Um, in addition to that, um, the thickness of your wall can be anywhere from 0.4 inches, so very, very uh, small, uh, to 16.15 inches. Um, so the smaller one is really ideal for, say, something like the ceiling tile. Um, so this is going to be great when we're doing lighting, uh, if you need to hang a projector in your projector room or something like that with a drop ceiling, this will go perfectly on the tile. So you just drill the hole, screw it together, and you've got this nice little pass-through for the cables uh, to go through. And of course you can choose the diameter. If you need something wider for the HDMI cable or something like that, you can go with something that's going to be you know, smaller this way, but a little bit larger as far as the hole diameter goes. If you contact Ameridroid at the time of your order, you can even custom print your Easy Portal in any of the 13 colors that they have available. So in my case, I actually wanted to have a different color on each side of the, uh, of the wall, with the green being in the main studio since that matches our logo color, and white in the production side because the walls in there are like a light gray. Um, so while there's a modest fee for the second color, Ameridroid was even able to accommodate that request. So it's very, very custom. Uh, plus, as I mentioned, this is an oversized version, a little bit bigger than what's generically available on their site. So I just requested that we get a, a larger uh, conduit for the amount of HDMI cables and things that I have to pass through for the studio. And they were more than happy uh, to oblige me on that. So very, very cool. Uh, Easy Portal are custom and they are 3D printed at Ameridroid. So I want to be clear about that. Uh, due to the very process of 3D printing, you're going to get some kind of Im imperfections uh, visibly, uh, but you can see that that is not affecting the performance of the, uh, the product at all. So that just screws together and clamps onto the wall. Very, very simple, but very, very nice. So the imperfections are, you know, it's not going to affect your usability whatsoever. Uh, but if you, if that's a problem for you, um, just keep in mind, these are 3D printed products. So you can see here, there is a little bit of imperfection on the visible area. It's very, very minor. Um, and you could actually, just like any 3D printed uh, product, you could, if you wanted to, uh, use a fine grit uh, wet sandpaper and sand that down if you wanted to. 
Um, you could paint them if you wanted to, but again, um, the imperfections are just because of the 3D print. And I think that is very, very good. And in fact, this, you know, I'm, I'm quite impressed with this. It's, it's really, really good quality and exactly what I needed. So let's see how easy it really is and get the Easy Portal installed. So that's the hole in the, on the bridge, our production room, leading out into the main studio. So, um, so you can see all the wires here going in through the, uh, the pipe. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so we'll just pull that through and no effort whatsoever to do, uh, to do the installation you'll see. But, uh, for me, it's just getting all this stuff out of the way. Man, I forgot how big and bulky that pipe was. <laughs> oh, Jeff. All right. All right. So the, uh, speaking of big and bulky, check out our old lights. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Now we're all LED. So anybody want to buy some uh, some old lights? Now here, I'm actually kind of measuring all scientific, like uh, the f the size of the flange to oh, make sure okay. that the hole, because I did pre-drill a hole for the pipe, so I needed to actually make this hole a little bit higher, which is a little bit difficult because I already had a hole there. But uh, I was able to just kind of quickly figure out how much room I needed for the flange. And you can see on the other side, uh, now there's actually a little bit of a broken space yeah. on the uh, lower part of the other side of the wall. You'll see that in a moment here, even better, Jeff. Um, Man, right? that's nice and flush. Yeah, so, but here on the other side, so I came through from that side so that it would line up really well. Yeah. But I think that um, previously there was something, there was another hole there that wasn't patched properly. So that's why it kind of cracked at the bottom there. Right. Okay. However, my I'm lucky because the flange is big enough to cover that. So even though you can see how bad it looks right there, on the other side of the wall. It covers it up. But yeah, the flange is big enough that it uh, that it really does cover up any of those kind of, you know, like uh, the damage look. See that? Wow, that fits so smoothly. It's perfect, so. <laughs> and, that looks stunning. And I like that it covers up my horrible hack job, <laughs> <laughs> but so super simple. So I'm just, just do it by hand. And we wondered if it would spin and I needed someone on the other side and nope, it no, works perfectly. Incredible. So wow. I'm pushing that through. So much easier now to run cable um, through the wall, and it's only going through that wall. I don't have to feed it through a big long pipe, yeah. which was pro part of the problem. I couldn't, I couldn't feed uh, XLR cables through because there's no way to push them through a 10 foot pipe. That's right. Yeah. So now I've only got six inches to go through. It's perfect. So, so here what I'm doing is I'm I'm binding the cables together um, using oh. a, a like a, a winding that I I picked up off uh, yes. Amazon. Um, so that that winding just kind of makes it a lot nicer. It makes it like a snake and binds all the cables together. So then I can kind of hide them uh, in the easy portal so you don't see anything other than that snake sticking out. Right. You don't have this mess of wires like I did before, uh, which is <laughs> kind of what we're up against here at the studio because you have so many cables going to all the cameras and everything. So yeah. Wow, that is so slick. Well done, Ameridroid. I like how easy it was, Jeff. Yeah. I guess that, oh, smart name, easy portal. Look at that. <laughs> so there's my, so my snake coming out. So there it is uh, on the back of the computer going through the easy portal and out to the outside Man. in the studio. That keeps it so clean. So there you have it. That's easy portal from Ameridroid.com. Don't forget as you're checking out, use our coupon code CAT5TVSUPPORTER. A buck will come off of your final order, but they will in turn know that you saw this video and they will throw some money in the Category 5 TV tip jar to help support what we do here at the show. So I appreciate that very much. Whether you're just trying to pass some cables through your drop ceiling or wall or desk at home, or whether you're a contractor, I mean, these are very practical, very easy to install, and anyone can do it if I can do it. And uh, they're very affordable too. So because of because of the customizability, I think there's just no end to what you could uh, what you could do with these. So you know, in our case here, we installed one between the two studio spaces for all the HDMI cables. Uh, but uh, you can obviously do more. These are going to be used for the lighting that we're going to be hanging off of our drop ceiling. Um, so we're going to get to that as well. But you can get them on Ameridroid.com. Just make sure that you reach out to them when you place your order to request your specific colors and things like that. Thanks for watching.
fact, this is Category 5 Technology TV, and our website is Category5.tv. Mm -hmm. Jeff, it's great to see you. It's nice to kind of have everything slowly getting back to normal and, yeah. and yeah, having, you know, this is, this is how things are at the moment. But um, lots of things are going to be changing over the next couple of weeks. I don't mm -hmm. know. Um, perhaps, you know, if you follow us on, uh, if you're a Kickstarter supporter or a patron, you, you have a bit more of, uh, well, a lot more of behind the scenes knowledge right. about what's going on. Um, so in the next couple of days, uh, so the contractor is going to be back again tomorrow. I see he's done some work already. We're, yeah, we're doing some more backdrops. We've got, I've got all kinds of backdrops that are going up into the system so that we can pull down different colors and things like that behind us. Um, we've got uh, some really great stuff that's happening. We're getting the, the, the wiring is going to be finished. And right yeah. now, the, the Easy Portal has made it a lot better to get the cables from the cameras and things like that. But there's still like the TV that we're looking at when we're yeah. on the air. And so cables are hanging down from that. And I've got an extension cord going to a power outlet. So all that's being hidden in the walls and everything yeah. else. So there's so much that has to be done. And I'm so eager for things to get to the point where we can have an open house and have yes. everybody in and, and show you around. Um, and there's already plans in place that uh, regardless of whether that can happen in person, uh, we are going to be doing a virtual open house. So, oh, awesome. um, so there will be an opportunity to have a tour de la studio uh, if, uh, regardless of whether you're local or remote or able to come and visit us or not, um, there will be that opportunity. So I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, that's exciting. And we'll shoot you with some paintballs while we're at it. <laughs> sure. So we've got to head over to the newsroom. Here is Becca. Here's what's coming up in the Category 5.TV newsroom. Toshiba shuts the lid on laptops after 35 years. The discovery of salt bound to water molecules on Ceres, the largest asteroid in the solar system, suggests that there may be an ocean lurking beneath the Akator crater. A convincing phishing scam is targeting, targeting cPanel users with a fake security advisory. A teenager has spent nearly $20,000 in Twitch donations with their mother's debit card. And Google is creating a worldwide Android phone-powered earthquake alert system. Stick around, the full details and this week's Crypto Corner are coming up. This is the Category 5.TV Newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. From the newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson. It's official, Japanese giant Toshiba has sold its final stake in the personal computer maker Dynabook, which means the firm no longer has a connection with making PCs or laptops. Sharp bought 80% of Toshiba's personal computing arm in 2018 for $36 million, 27 million pounds, and has now bought the remaining shares, Toshiba said in a statement. Toshiba's first laptop, the T1100, the T1100, launched in 1985. It weighed four kilograms and worked with three and a half inch floppy disks. According to the Toshiba Science Museum website, it was launched only in Europe at first and had an annual sales target of just 10,000 units. In the year 2011, Toshiba sold more than 17 million PCs. But my, how times have changed. By 2017, this had fallen to just 1.9 million. In 2016, it had ceased making consumer laptops for the European market, focusing only on hardware for businesses. Recent years have been difficult for the conglomerate. In 2015, the firm posted a full year loss of $318 million. That same year, its president and vice president resigned after an independent panel found the company had overstated its profits for the previous six years. Last year, they wound up their nuclear business Nugen in the UK after failing to find a buyer for it. Consumer demand for laptops has soared in the last few months because of the coronavirus pandemic and global lockdowns, but overall the market for personal computers has been tough for quite a while. Analyst Marina Kocheva from the firm CCS Insight says only those who have managed to sustain scale and price like Lenovo or have a premium brand like Apple have succeeded in the unforgiving PC market where volumes have been falling for years. 
The results of a major exploration mission showed Monday that the dwarf planet Ceres, long believed to be a barren space rock, is an ocean world with reservoirs of seawater beneath its surface. Maria Cristina, Cristina de Santi from the National Institute for Astrophysics in Italy says of the discovery, I'm extremely excited to find some evidence of liquid water, together with the fact that this body has a lot of minerals, very interesting for the formation of life. It's a good combination of chemical compounds that help in forming biological molecules. De Sancti and her colleagues analyzed high-resolution images in Sarah's, of Sarah's taken by the Dawn spacecraft, which orbited the dwarf planet between 2015 and 2018 before it ran out of fuel. In its final phase, the spacecraft orbited just 35 kilometers above the surface of Ceres, focusing on the Akater Crater. She and her team were able to identify salt by comparing data, including images and spectral analysis, from the Dawn spacecraft with equivalent analysis of chemicals here on Earth. Earlier observations of bright deposits on the crater had hinted at the presence of salty water underneath, but the discovery of hydrated sodium chloride provides much stronger evidence of an underground ocean. Impact fractures on the surface of the Akater crater analyzed in a separate study suggest the ocean is some 40 kilometers below the surface, although the exact size is unknown. It's pretty large, says De Sancti, adding that the presence of such a large body will certainly have influenced the geology of Ceres with water coming up from below the surface and bringing minerals with it. Ralph Jawman of the Free University of Berlin in Germany says, the mineralogy is unique and so far not observed on other solar system bodies. Jawman says these findings demonstrate that even small bodies like Ceres could have water in their interior. A clever phishing scam is targeting cPanel users with a fake security advisory alerting them of critical vulnerabilities in their web hosting management panel. cPanel is administrative software commonly installed on shared web hosting services that allow website owners to easily administer their site through a graphical user interface. Starting last week, cPanel and web host manager, WHM, users began reporting a targeted phishing email campaign with an email subject of cPanel urgent update request that was pretending to be a security advisory from the company. This fake advisory stated that updates had been released to fix security concerns in cPanel and WHM software and recommends all users install the updates. In addition to a well-worded email with little or no grammar and spelling issues, the threat actors use language commonly found in security advisories. The attackers registered the domain cPanel7831.com to make the scam appear as, as an authentic advisory from cPanel and are using Amazon Simple Email Service, SES, to send out the emails. If a recipient of this phishing email falls for the scam and clicks on the Update Your cPanel and WHM installations, they were brought to a website that prompted a user to log in with their cPanel credentials. As this is a well-done and convincing scam, it would not be surprising if some users fell for the scam. If you received a similar email recently and entered your login credentials at this site, it is strongly suggested that you immediately log in to your web hosting provider and change the password on your account. You should then perform a complete audit of your site while paying extra attention to the addition of strange PHP files that can be used as backdoors. Also be sure to examine the website's uh, .ht access file for changes that automatically inject malicious code into every web page or redirect visitors. That's an interesting story because for a lot of people who don't have a lot of background knowledge in web development, to be able to go to a DIY web hosting service where you could build your own website with your own cPanel, it seems like such an easy thing. But yeah. most people wouldn't have that tech knowledge to recognize a phishing scam when it came to the cPanel. Sure. And, and I mean, some of the stuff that they get access to, if you give them the login credentials, can really cause problems. Yeah, like if they have Linux access. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. certainly, I mean, the, any like cheap hosting solution is going to have some kind of a a portal, whether it's cPanel or otherwise, yep. but you think about cPanel and, and as you say, a novice user signing up for the $5 hosting account, not really up on the latest security trends. 
yeah. could be dangerous. Same thing we see with WordPress. Like, oh, exactly. You get a WordPress site because you think it's easy to set up and administer yourself, but you don't realize necessarily, I am generalizing, but maybe you don't realize that that leads to major security impl implications if you are not on the up and up. It's and true. Is super careful. So for somebody who's sitting there going, uh, I do my own website. I mm -hmm. just happened to update my security oh, panel. I just <laughs> gave my login to these hackers. Like what? I, I know that, you know, Becca covered in the story, you know, yeah. checking some certain things, but what are some, I think, well, she hit on the, the first thing I would do is check for any recently modified files. And on a Linux server, right. it's really easy because you can do a find dash M time and, and sort by the time, uh, that the file was last modified. Okay. And so you can see any file that was modified in the last 10 days. And if you don't, you know, if you uploaded your site six months ago, you know that, hey, those files are suspect. So you That's can look right. at them. Yeah. Yeah. Because so, it's not like a virus. It's not like you can no. run a virus scan and, and find the malware. No, it's like it, perfectly legit tools that they're using to allow them to con command and control your website. Yeah. Or even going so far, using the WordPress example, of creating users. Mm -hmm. cPanel, same thing. Maybe they create users. Maybe they add uh, an SMTP account so they can use your mail server for sending spam. That's right. That's a big one. Yeah. So if somebody doesn't have the tech knowledge to go in, take a look at their account, what's another way that they could deal with that? Go through the hosting provider and say, hey, can you check my account? Jeff, if you if you really have that low of a knowledge when it comes to that kind of thing, you shouldn't you, you shouldn't be doing your self hosting. Right. Yeah. Realistically, if yeah, you're oh, for sure. if you're not familiar with terms like FTP, SFTP, and what the difference between those two things is, SSH, SSL, SMTP, POP3, IMAP, mm -hmm. if you don't know what any one of those terms are, MySQL. MariaDB. If right. you don't know what any of those words mean, then self-hosting is not for you. That's right. Um, again, I'm being general, but that's those are red flags for me. And, and you don't want to find yourself in a situation where, yes, I'm saving money on hosting, but I part of that is that you are relinquishing the desire to pay someone to maintain. That's right. And putting that all on you. So it works great if you're knowledgeable and you're getting the $5 a month hosting account or whatever, right, as an example, because you're able to do that maintenance yourself. But this is where church websites become illicit websites. Yes. And yep. other business websites become defaced and data theft occurs. And some companies are, you know, irreparably uh, have their reputation damaged yes. because of these things. Um, well, and also if you have a website where you're doing any monetary payments, you know, if you're, if you're receiving big, customer yeah. payments, like that's even, that's a whole other can of worms you're getting into there, Jeff. Well, yeah, but you've got to be careful for that kind of stuff. So please, please, please. Number one, change your password. Just like Becca said, mm -hmm. number two, start going through the files on your server to make sure something hasn't changed. If you haven't logged into your cPanel for a uh, security update, chances are you're probably not hit by this, but if you did, you need to start doing some checking. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So good advice. Good advice. Yeah. We've got more coming up. A teenager has spent nearly $20,000 oh. in Twitch donations on their mother's debit card. <laughs> and Google is creating a worldwide Android phone powered earthquake alert system. Becca has these stories coming up. Plus Robert is here with the crypto corner. So don't go anywhere. of cryptos and welcome to the crypto corner now it has been an interesting week hasn't it let's take a look at it if we look at CoinGecko, which is my current favorite uh, directory then we see that the market cap has increased since we spoke last time to 364 billion with a small decrease at the moment of 2.7 percent which is normal nothing unusual there uh, if we look at the top coins also nothing unusual here well we've got chain link with minus eight percent but it had an increase of already 40% in the last seven days. And as always, we sort by those seven days and then the picture changes significantly. 
normally we have got around 15 to 20 coins that achieve more than 15 percent this time we've got over 50 coins that achieve more than 15 percent and i guess that one or the other of you is uh, contemplating in investing in cryptos now and there i'd like to just uh, give you some recommendations the first is if somebody recommends something to you just be very careful because um, not everybody has got your best interest uh, in mind and um, and you can do the same research they are doing so let's take a look at here band protocol that's an oracle like chain link if i click on this one here i'm just showing you how this this system works then we have got here the current price uh, here's the website so if you click on this here you, it will be redirected you will be redirected to the website medium.com that's publications uh, etherscan this is an erc20 coin so based on ethereum um, then you've got the red, uh, reddit twitter telegram so that's whether you see the community talking about this coin and if we scroll a little bit further down then we've got the numbers of this coin so um, in the last 30 days band increased by 600 um, percent currently we've got a retracement of 23 percent uh, also i would say this is normal here and if you're interested in buying something then there's some interesting numbers like for example example <clears throat> what was the all-time uh, high it was 17 dollars so that's uh, uh, one day ago as you can see here one day ago we achieved all-time high here and the all-time low which was november 25th on 2019 so nine months ago it increased seven uh, six thousand three hundred ninety nine percent from that day so that's interesting statistics so probably i would not invest in something that just had its all-time high because i assume that short term there will be no significant growth in it if you're interested in any way buying then you click here on markets in markets you have got all those exchanges listed that are that are trading where you can trade uh, band so on binance you have got two or three possibilities one band with usdt with tether with bitcoin and with the binance coin here you see the price so of course they will be all uh, more or less the same and then you've got the debt the debt means how far can you go before there is a significant impact on the price yeah, so if I go, for example, into Hotbit, no idea what type of uh, exchange it is, and I want to buy for thousand dollars, then I will get significantly a uh, higher price than those thirteen dollars thirteen. Whereby, if I've got thousand dollars to invest in Binance with Binance, then it will have no effect. Oh, this is the price I will get. So this is how you read the mi plus two percent and the minus two percent. It's a uh, it's an interesting number if you want to invest in coins because some of those coins that people are recommending as the next big thing have got absolutely no liquidity and then it's difficult to buy something and it's very difficult to sell also something yeah <clears throat> and um, and once you have bought something i my recommendation is always not your keys not your coins so um i the recommendation is as always to put it either on a on a ledger which is this year or on a treasure which is this year <coughs> um because that's uh currently the state of art in regards to the security of of cryptos um if you're planning to buy one of those then go only to the original website um and buy it there don't buy it on amazon because you can i heard uh, sometimes uh some of those uh, hardware wallets have been compromised so always go to the original it takes you probably four weeks or three weeks longer to receive that device but i think that investment is a very important and very good investment otherwise be very careful in where you're investing uh, do your research uh, don't trust i mean listen to what experts have to say whether they recommend band or chain link or whatever they recommend but then do your own research i showed you how to do that so you go into every website and uh, see where you want to put your money there and last but not least also be very careful with exchanges because they're exchanges that are dangerous so i mean binance uh coinbase and so they are here from the western world you can more or less trust them although i would never keep a set never keep any coins on those exchanges um, but um, 
but you never know if you have to do KYC. In other words, you have to give your passport picture, or driving license, address, telephone number to these exchanges. You don't know what they're doing with that. Like in the case of Coinbase, they said that they're going to sell your data. So I don't know if that's in your interest. Anyway, that's it from me today. So I hope uh, you enjoyed, you learned something. I wish you a fantastic week and I really hope we'll be uh, seeing each other next week again. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you, Robert. And just a reminder that we're not providing financial advice, but only sharing what's happening in the crypto cryptocurrency market. Always remember that cryptocurrency markets are ever-changing and always volatile, so sh you should only spend what you can afford to lose. I don't, li I don't like it when Robert says things that make me scared. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, I gave my driver's license to Coinbase. Should I be worried now? Robert, comments? Oh, I don't know. While we're thinking about that, we're going to throw back to Becca in the newsroom. Thank you, Robbie. A teenage Twitch viewer sent $19,870 USD to several streamers using his mother's debit card over the course of two weeks. The teen's mother found the charges toward the card between June 14th to June 30th, uh, claiming years of savings were taken from her account over the two-week period. She says these donations went to popular streamers on the platform. The mother, who has decided to remain anonymous to protect her family, says that nearly all the money she lost has been credited back to her account. After struggling to contact anyone at Twitch to discuss the issue, the woman successfully received a refund from the streaming site's paying service, Zola. Using the company's online chat feature, she got adjusted credits on nearly all uh, transactions, but in exchange was told the account is permanently blocked to prevent future unauthorized charges. Before contacting Sola, however, she attempted to communicate with Amazon and even resorted to sending a registered letter to Twitch CEO Emmett Shearer. When all else failed, she tried contacting her bank, but they could only provide further assistance if she was willing to press charges against her son. She found out about Sola by, discovery, by discovering other parents online who also had found success in similar situations. Although she was able to receive most of her money, she said hitting a brick wall with Twitch was the most frustrating thing of all. The fact that no one would respond and there was no way to speak with anyone was horrible, she said. That was probably the worst. The son is remorseful, according to the mother, and is going to counseling. He's also been limited to one hour of monitored daily playtime, with a stipulation that he must do positive activities throughout the day, get exercise, and interact with the family in a positive manner. You know, as a father of young kids that are very engrossed in YouTubers and yeah, yeah, yeah. all that kind of stuff, this story makes me go, who <laughs> am I glad <laughs> I'm not giving my kids my debit card? <laughs> when I first got an Amazon Fire TV stick, uh, I made the mistake of not setting a pin. Oh no! And of course, you're logged into your um, your Amazon account. Yeah. So um, I was at work, and suddenly my phone started blowing up. I'm like, "What is going on?" So finally, I pulled out my phone because I'm getting all these notifications one after another after another. And I look at my phone, and I'm seeing Amazon charges one after another after oh, another no. to the tune of $450. Oh. Now, nothing like $20,000, but, but so still. this was a case where my son was playing a video game. Yep. And he determined that if he put 0000, .000 as the pin, because that was the default, yep. that he could buy anything in the game. Not realizing it was, not realizing it was actually oh, off my no. credit card. So did you yeah. get it refunded? I did. Amazon is fantastic That's for, good. for that kind of thing. So they reversed it and, and no problem whatsoever. But I can just, I can feel that stress that this woman yeah. must have been going through to realize $20,000 gone from my debit card. And, and that makes me think, like, is this a failure in our electronic system right now? I mean, I think this about TAP. Right. And how three, four years ago at the Toronto Santa Claus Parade, somebody had a, a tap receiver on, attached to their phone. You know how you can get yep. these devices. Yep. And they went through the parade and they stole $20 at a time just by 
Yes. Approaching people's pockets. Yes. And, and so walked away with thousands and thousands of dollars. And bef I don't even know. I never heard if they ever got caught. Oh, I'm sure they would have. Everything's they, traceable. They, yeah. So, it, but it just makes me think about debit cards, how they have the Visa logo now. Yes. And so like that has happened to my wife. Yikes. Um, she had a, a visa debit Yeah, and remember uh, when debit was the safe card, right? I, <laughs> I remember that. I, I want to say it was maybe two years ago. Yeah. Um, she went to use her debit card and she couldn't use it. Oh, and no. she's like, what's going on? Oh no. Went online and found out that her account was locked mm -hmm. for suspicious activity. So she okay. looked in. So at least they're doing that. Right. Yeah. So she, so she looked into it and over the course of three days, there was hundreds of dollars in food purchases from all over California using okay. uh, the visa debit function. So somehow somebody had gotten her mm. visa yeah. debit information yeah. and was making food purchases. And so because like, because it operates just like a visa. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so it was no big deal to do like 20 bucks to this pizza joint, yeah. you know, 30 bucks to this restaurant. And so whoever it was, was doing it. Now, thankfully she got all of her money back. It all Good. got, uh, you know, returned. Yeah. But I mean, in the case of this story, so, I mean, there's a couple things here. One is, how did the kid get the debit card or, or oh, was it how? just registered to the, yeah, just to the grab account? it anyway. from mom's wallet right. and, and it's, but second, you'd think the bank accounts, most debits have a daily limit of a thousand dollars. True. And so if okay. he dropped 20 grand over a two week period, either she had a higher daily limit or there was no limit on it. I'm thinking mama has $20,000 in the bank. She probably has a higher limit than I do. Well, that's probably true. I don't think I've ever <laughs> had twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> Not all at once. Maybe just before my mortgage payment came out, just after the right. put the money in. That's right. Now. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> but the other thing is the fact that you know there are kids that are out there. They're going. I want to donate to my favorite person, and I mean, right. my kids are always talking about their favorite YouTubers and. Uh, you know, our son with his Chromebook, mm -hmm. like I, you know, I have an email for him cause he's at the age he can have an email now. And so I have the, you know, master login for his email and every once in a while I'll just right. check up okay. on what he's doing exactly. and I'm finding, oh, he's commenting on different YouTubers right. yeah. and I'm going, okay, I need to have a conversation with him about internet awareness and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm now very aware of what is linked up to that account. Mm -hmm. Could he purchase this kind of stuff? And so you have to think very security conscious as a parent, if you're going to start handing online accounts to your kids. That's a tough, tough situation. Now my, my producer is, is giving us the look that we need to move on, Sorry, but I'm a blabber. as a final thought on this particular story, as a content creator on platforms like YouTube, uh, a, a Twitch creator who, you know, it, that's, that's the biggest, like, fear and burn. And, and even, I'll be honest with you, and, and some of you may or may not know this, but even having had such a successful Kickstarter campaign, right up until the moment that the money's in the bank, you're, you're on the edge of your seat as a content creator thinking, what if they back down? Right. What if, uh, you know, I've, I've basically budgeted these funds that have been donated. What if they retroacted that? That would be a real bad situation for me as a content creator. So to these content creators who received that $20,000 from this child, from this teenager, and then had it reversed, where did that leave them? Like that's such yeah. a, a hard situation. So we need to be, there need to be things put in place to protect those content creators, the kids, the parents. Um, there need to be, you know, I hate to say regulations. That's not what I'm talking about, but, right. but maybe Twitch is irresponsible. Maybe they're partly to blame for this. Maybe there's something that needs to be said about that. I, I a rabbit hole conversation. I, and we that's all I'm, go down. I know that's producer, all I'm doing is just opening the, that box and just letting you dive in to comment below. Right. What are your thoughts? And we're going to throw right back to Becca. Google is creating a worldwide Android phone-powered earthquake alert system. The first part of that system rolled out Tuesday. If you opt in, the acceler uh, accelerometer in your Android phone will become one data point for an algorithm designed to detect earthquakes. Eventually, that system will automatically send warnings to people who could be impacted. It's a feature made possible through Google's strengths. The staggering numbers of Android phones around the world and clever, clever use of algorithms on big data. 
As with its collaboration with Apple on exposure tracing and other Android features like car crash detection and emergency location services, it shows that there are untapped ways that smartphones could be used for something important to the community at large. Google is rolling out the system in small stages. First, Google is partnering with the United States Geo Geological Survey and the California Office of Emergency Services to send the agency's earthquake alerts to Android users in that state. Those alerts are generated by already existing Shake Alert system, which uses data generated by traditional seismometers. Mark Stogatis, principal Android software engineer at Google, says, It'd be great if there were just uh, seismometer-based systems everywhere that could detect earthquakes. That's not really practical, and it's unlikely to have global coverage because seismometers are extremely expensive. They have to be constantly maintained. You need a lot of them in an area to really have a good earthquake uh, early warning system. So the second and third stages of Google's plan will be powered instead by the Android phones. The company is proceeding fairly cautiously though. In the second stage, Google will show localized results in Google searches for earthquakes based on the data it's detecting from Android phones. The idea there is that when you feel an earthquake, you'll go to Google to see if that's what you felt or not. An Android phone can become a mini seismometer because it's an, acceler uh, an accelerometer, that the thing that detects if you've rotated it or not. Android system uses the data from that sensor to see if the phone is shaking. It is only on when an Android phone is plugged in and not in use to preserve battery life. Once it has more confidence in the accuracy of the system, Google will begin actively sending out earthquake warnings to people who live in areas where there are not seismometer-based warning systems. Over the long term, Google hopes to create an API based on its earthquake detection system. It doesn't plan on using the system on iPhones, but if the API comes out, then Apple would be free to use it. More interesting, though, is what other systems would benefit from an earthquake detection API. For example, somebody could build something that automatically stops an elevator at the next floor and opens the door so that people can get out before the wave comes. And you can turn off gas valves automatically. You can have something that stops medical procedures or open the door to fire stations ahead of time. That's a common problem in earthquakes where fires are a big deal and firefighters often just can't get out. So you can build something that does that. Airplanes can stop landing as they're doing this, abort their landing. Trains can be slowed down. There's an entire ecosystem that can be enabled by using this Android-based detection and having it published server-side so that others can plug into it. Google's plan is to minimize false positives and tune the system right away, and users near earthquake fault zones will soon see info in Google searches and the inevitable rollout of local notifications. It wasn't long ago, Jeff, that Simon Weckert, a uh, Berlin-based artist, um, took 99 Android smartphones, put them in a yes. red wagon, and walked down the main street that was completely devoid of vehicles. That's and right. yet, Google's Maps service showed that there were traffic jams everywhere he went. Right. Because there's 99 Android phones. So, you know, I hate to put the thought in people's heads, but this is the thing with an Android-based system such as this. While it sounds amazing, while it sounds like, hey, this is a very brilliant idea, how hard is it to take a Raspberry Pi Zero and a motor and connect it to one centralized server and share the diagrams of that online and say, okay, everybody, I want you to, to build this, take a Raspberry Pi, plug it into this motor, put your phone in this motor when you go to bed. And because it's internet connected, they can make it, they can set off all the phones vibrating like this in any area of the world where they have these devices. It'd be so easy. Yeah. It'd just be, it's such an easy hack. So it's like, uh, you, how can they trust that data? Well, I think it's exactly. brilliant. An accelerometer to, to detect earthquake. Well, well, and that's the thing. Like, this is a, an amazing thing that they're doing. Yeah. But with amazing ideas also comes <laughs> the amazing ability to mess with it thanks to human beings. Yeah. Uh, I mean, not only We're that. We're terrible. Like, what if you have, you know, if somebody decides to use it as a, uh, a type of social attack, so to speak, mm. where... There's a group of 15, 20 people, they all have their phones. 
they congregate in a particular area and they just sit there and start shaking their phone. And if they all start going to synchronize it with with like Raspberry Pis (laughs) through the internet, like you could actually like pick a spot and make an earthquake on Google Maps because you know it's just. So it, it'll be interesting to see if that's... Now my watch is telling me I'm exercising. Oh, really? <laughs> you got steps just there. Nice. I got steps. This is great. <laughs> Brilliant. So. Just quickly before Becca wraps things up, uh, Robert K., uh, Robert Koenig from the Crypto Corner says, hey, with Coinbase, Robbie, you should be okay. They are selling your data to the government, though. And he okay. says, I don't that, trust... That's because they're centralized. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I just... Like, can I assume that the government knows everything about me anyways? But probably, yes. but would I mean, that the be government tax, issued my? Would that be like IRS tax purposes? Yeah, I suppose so. But yeah. I mean, what, selling my info to the government. So I don't hold my crypto in uh, in a centralized um, exchange at all. However, I do use the exchange to transfer funds between right. U.S. dollars and, and Bitcoin, for example. Yeah. So. Um, uh, SadSack963 makes a really good comment about the debit card issue and, ha- and, and a child being able to use mom's credit card and says, what if the uh, or debit card, what if these debit cards had 2FA? Oh, Wouldn't phenomenal. that be superb? So what if there was 2FA on your debit card that somehow, you, you know, whether you pull out a, a, an authenticator token or, or the authenticator app on your phone, whatever it is that you need to do use to be able to yeah i think that's very very smart so thanks for submitting that uh becca big thanks to roy w nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us this week thanks for watching the category 5.tv newsroom don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight linux bias and if you appreciate what we do become a patron at patreon.com slash category 5. from the category 5.tv newsroom i'm becca ferguson Well, it's been great having you here this week. Uh, that's 660 weeks of Category 5 under that's our belt. Amazing. So, uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun so far, and we've got some exciting things to come. You just check out our website, category5.tv. Scroll down on the homepage, and you'll see some of that stuff that's up and coming. Mm-hmm. Also, there is a, uh, a coffee break this Sunday at noon, so make sure you, uh, you join us for that. Again, our website, category5.tv, scroll down, find the coffee break, and you'll get the Zoom meeting ID and be able to join us for that uh, community break. I will uh, see you again next week. It's been nice having you here, nice having you here, and uh, thanks for supporting the show, everybody. See ya. Bye.